Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tom George, and I'm the Dean of Marketing and Outreach at Stanley Community College. I would like to highlight the format of today's SEC Achieving the Dream press conference. We will have a very short video to begin our event, followed by brief remarks from Dr. John Enamite, President of Stanley Community College, and Dr. Karen Stout, President of Achieving the Dream. Dr. Stout is joining us via a Zoom video conferencing call uh, from her headquarters in Silver Spring, Maryland. Finally, at the end, you'll have an opportunity to ask Dr. Enamite and Dr. Spout any questions you have at the end of the press conference. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the president of Stanley Community College, Dr. John Enamite. Are we going to do the video first? Yes. At Stanley Community College, we have exciting news. Achieving the Dream announced that Stanley Community College is one of eight community colleges to attain leader college status in 2017. SCC is now one of only 90 leader colleges within the United States. We achieved this by demonstrating measurable gains on important student success metrics over a three-year period. Achieving the Dream is a comprehensive, non-governmental reform movement for student success. The Achieving the Dream network includes over 220 colleges in 39 states. Together with their network of higher education institutions, coaches and advisors, state policy teams, investors and partners, they help more than 4 million community college students have a better economic opportunity and achieve their dreams. Achieving the Dream leader colleges are eligible to compete for awards and grant funded learning initiatives and are encouraged to provide leadership and support to other colleges in the Achieving the Dream network. Additionally, SEC benefits from leadership and data coaches who identify strengths and areas of improvement, resources, and tools for self-assessment in seven key dimensions of successful colleges. SCC has worked very hard for this designation by creating student success, equity, and a culture of evidence on our campus. Our mission is to continue to use successful pathways for our students. We invite you to stop by our campus or visit our website. Thank you. Again, good afternoon. My name is John Enamite. I have the privilege of being president at Stanley Community College. On behalf of the students at Stanley Community College, our board of trustees and faculty staff, I would like to welcome you to our campus. I would like to thank Dr. Stout for her valuable time this afternoon. It's good to see you and hope you're doing you. well. The video that we just watched contain information regarding Achieving the Dream and Stanley Community College. SEC has been committed to student success for the last 46 years. More recently, however, Stanley Community College has really demonstrated this commitment via a number of partnerships in innovative state and national student success efforts. Stanley Community College participated in the Completion by Design Initiative which began with funding by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Additionally, Stanley Community College was selected as one of only 30 colleges nationwide to participate in the National American Association of Community Colleges Pathways Project. This two-year project was also funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and recently concluded its active work, although reporting will go on for a number of years. These initiatives have resulted in positive momentum for Stanley Community College and its students. We are here today, however, to talk about Stanley Community College's relationship with Achieving the Dream. Achieving the Dream was conceived as an initiative by the Lumina Foundation in 2004. Stanley Community College has been a partner with Achieving the Dream since 2012. Achieving the Dream recognizes certain colleges with, with a designation called Leader College and today we are proud to say that Stanley Community College has received Achieving the Dream's Leader College status. Through all of these efforts, it's easy to see that Stanley Community College strives to be purposeful in its efforts to help students achieve their goals. What does being a leader college mean for our students? These efforts Specifically, our designation as a leader college means that Stanley Community College does not take a passive approach to ensuring that our students meet their goals. Instead, Stanley Community College faculty and staff are committed 
to using data to make well-informed decisions and take action when students are not progressing towards their goals. More specifically, and quite frankly, it means that a student at Stanley Community College has a higher chance of success as compared to other institutions. What does this mean for Stanley County? In a broader perspective, Stanley County benefits by having an institution of higher education officially recognized as being one of the top community colleges in the nation. It also means that the return on investment for the public is high. It means that Stanley Community College is well positioned to be a positive beacon for Stanley County with regard to economic development efforts. Now I would like to introduce Dr. Karen Stout, who will also be making remarks. Dr. Karen Stout became president and CEO of Achieving the Dream in 2015, following a 14-year tenure as president of Montgomery County Community College in Pennsylvania. With her leadership, ATD's network is growing and innovating with new efforts around scaling advising redesign, developing zero textbook degree using open education resources, designing non-cognitive wraparound support systems, and placing teaching and learning at the center of institutional change efforts. Dr. Stout has received national recognition for her accomplishments, including American Association for Women in Community Colleges 2017 Woman of the Year and Washington Monthly's 16 Most Innovative Higher Education Leaders. It truly is an honor to be associated with Dr. Stout and have her joining us today. Dr. Stout? Well, thank you so much for that uh, kind introduction and congratulations to you and the Stanley Community College uh, team and community uh, for what is a really important, I think, marker and milestone of your commitment to building uh, a culture built on the student experience, built on a culture that's very focused on student success and ensuring that every student that enters Stanley uh, Community College will have a successful experience that leads to uh, a return on investment for the student, which translates into a strong return on investment for your community, which was very well stated. Leader colleges are exemplars in our Achieving the Dream network. So we're proud today to recognize officially uh, your achievement. And you know what struck me in reviewing your application materials is that your progress is concrete and measurable. Now certainly you've been involved in completion by design and you were one of the 30 colleges in the pathways work and we're proud that you were selected for that as well. But your work around student success really is centered on some key principles that are so important to sustaining this culture. So this is a, a milestone marker, it's not the end. You know this journey will continue. Uh, you have examined your data very carefully. You've shared it broadly with program directors and faculty, folks that can make a difference when they have the data in hand. You've engaged your entire college community in planning and creating and implementing new processes, new courses. You've sought input from students with student focus groups, and that is not, uh, that, that's rare in some of our Achieving the Dream colleges, so I applaud you for that. Uh, and you started to tackle change in a comprehensive way, not in what I call a boutique intervention way. You really understand that this is a redesign experience and your first year redesign, first year experience redesign is evidence of that. I also really like the way that you have uh, linked your student success work to your accreditation work and your work in determining course and program level learning outcomes. Uh, and you, you've made some tough decisions by making new student orientation mandatory before registration, uh, requiring that the student success course is taken within uh, the first semester of a student's experience and making advising mandatory. So in the introduction, you spoke to the work Achieving the Dreams doing an advising redesign. You're already well into that advising redesign work and I wanna congratulate you for that. I think the reason that we designated you as a leader college was from your own application where you spoke very clearly to the work that you're doing around gateway math and improving outcomes for students that uh, are progressing through math, which we know is a major barrier for many students across the country for student success. 
So I want to congratulate you uh, first and foremost for that work in, in reforming the math pathways. Uh, and I want to thank the faculty uh, for taking, uh, taking the initiative and the lead. We know that faculty leadership of this work is absolutely essential, and we're seeing that demonstrated at Stanley Community College. So congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Stout. I think at this point, we're going to just open it up for open, questions. Do open this up for questions that you guys may have. You did receive a packet of information that, that has some detailed, more detailed information than what you've heard us speak to, but we're, we will be happy to, to answer any questions that you may have about achieving the dream, leader, college status, or what we have done as an institution. Um, so after achieving this milestone, what's your next goal? Like since you've gotten here with the achieving the dream, uh, what's the next step, or what's what are you doing going forward for everybody? Well, I appreciated Dr. Stout's comment. This this is not the end. This is really. Um, it is a recognition that we're very proud of, but it doesn't mark the end of our efforts. And as a part of the Leader College um, program, we, we must recertify in three years, which means we can't become complacent. And that's one thing that my executive staff and I have talked about, because we must remain proactive and we can't become complacent and pat ourselves on the back because really at, at the core of this is the student's success and we are, we're really becoming even more actively engaged in pulling more data and using data to make even better informed decisions. Uh, Dr. Stout mentioned the first year experience. One of the discussions that we've had within the institution is is rolling that and creating a second year experience for our students. So at this point we're, we're hoping to take this and build additional student success initiatives within the institution to, to help ensure that our students continue being successful. Obviously, we will have students that don't quite do what they need to do, but we're looking at that data and we'll always be able to make continuous improvement efforts. That's one thing I've challenged our staff and college to do is to be an institution committed to continuous improvement. Did I understand that you, you have to reapply for this in three years? We must recertify every three years in order to maintain leader college status. And I know Dr. Stout had mentioned, uh, she was talking about the, the gap, gateway with math. So I'm, I'm to understand that was a critical part of uh, this distinction. Can, can you expand on that a little bit more? Yeah, Richie, I appreciate that. What? A college must do in order to obtain leader college status, one of the things a college must do is demonstrate a three-year positive trend as it relates to some student success metric. And Stanley Community College uh, chose Gateway Math as our success metric. So in your packet you will see, I think it's in the packet, you will see that we have demonstrated success as it relates to student students being successful in gateway math courses. So um, we're, I'm really proud of that fact because if you talk about where students struggle when they come to community college, it's math. So given the fact that we are seeing such positive momentum as it relates to gateway math courses, or the, the first college course is what gateway math courses mean, that really speaks highly to the institution, our math department, our faculty and staff because they're committed to really reinventing what they're doing and how they're teaching math to our students. It's not, I'm going to lecture, you're going to take a test and nothing ever changes. The faculty are really willing to um, take a look, take a, and, and take some, have some self-reflection and see what, what changes need to be made and they've done a really good job with that and we're, we see that in the data. When you recertify in three years, will, will it also focus on math as a gateway, or, or will that change? It could change. Uh, we're, uh, Dr. Stout, you feel free to pipe up at any time. It absolutely could change. And you know, you you picked math, and I think that was a good one for you to pick. And we know 
that as you continue to improve that math metric and you get more students through gateway math in that first year, you'll see stronger overall completion rates. And you know, hopefully in three years, you'll be able to look at you know, a longer part of the student experience. I love what you said about focusing on the second year uh, as maybe your next horizon. And there could be metrics like uh, fall to fall retention or first year uh, to second year retention based on credit accumulation. I mean, there are a lot of metrics that, that are now in front of you uh, to focus on improving. And I'm sure you've already started to, to talk about what those metrics might be based on the data, your, your most recent uh, student success data. Leon? When you talk about math, what are you, or the actual language, what are you talking about? Talking about geometry, algebra, calculus, what kind of math? That could, it really could be a couple of different math courses that we have here at the institution. What, when we say gateway math, what that means is it's the first college level math course a student takes when they arrive on campus. So, um, I can spout numbers. We do have um, Dr. Hill, who's the VP of Academic Affairs. She could talk, speak more in detail about what those courses are and what, what's comprised, but it's the first college-level math course that students take when they're here that does not include, of course, developmental math or remedial courses. So it's the how successful students are when they take that first math course. And we've seen success uh, the trend is, uh, the three-year trend is positive for students being successful in, in those gateway math courses. Does this designation help you or could help you draw down federal money, state money, grants? Does this, how would this help you economically, if at all? Within the Leader College uh, program, it will, Dr. Stout, you feel free to help, but it will open up potential grant opportunities. So we become, uh, we become more aware of what opportunities are available to leader colleges within the network. And then also by being purposeful within, the, within using data in continuous improvement, that, that does indirectly benefit us as we write grant applications that may be outside of the leader college network, but it, it, it only helps us make our case better whenever we start talking about different grant opportunities that may arise. Dr. Stout, is there anything you'd yeah, like to add? As far as uh, the network goes, Achieving the Dream is, in some respects, an intermediary. We receive philanthropic funding uh, for testing ideas uh, that can improve the student experience and improve student success. And when we receive those kind of philanthropic dollars, we typically uh, only open up grant opportunities to our leader colleges because the leader colleges have demonstrated an ability uh, to move forward student success using all the fundamentals that we believe are important. So for example, a Stanley would be eligible for grants in the, that we awarded in the past around advising redesign, around the use of open education resources, around uh, engaging adjunct faculty in, uh, in the teaching and learning uh, redesign processes. Uh, and we have a couple of other potential new grant opportunities on the horizon that hopefully we'll be able to announce at our dream conference in February that Stanley will now be eligible to compete for because they have leader college status. What kind of monetary values are we talking about with some of these grants? They range, uh, you know, the, the open education resource uh, grant opportunities were about, uh, I think $200,000 over the course of three years. And those dollars were to support uh, things like faculty release time and the design of course materials, et cetera. Uh, the advising grant that uh, is soon sunsetting was about $250,000 per institution also over a three year period. So they range, and it, a lot depends on the design of the program uh, that is really designed by the, uh, the funder in partnership with Achieving the Dream. If you know how many of the other 58, 57 community colleges in the state are a leader college with this designation, if you know, in ballparks, fine, half a dozen, 12, 
Do you know, Dr. Stone? I believe I know the answer. That's a great question. I could quickly, I could quickly look it up, um, and I'm not sure if it's on our web page or not. I believe, uh, Leon, it's, it's but five. Are probably five or six. Okay. Okay. Less, less than 10%. Okay. Uh, All right. How many did you say? Five. Um, there's been talking a lot about the data. I was just curious, how's that data collected? Is it strictly just like through college, like the financial aid process? Or is it something more than that? That's really a more complex question yeah. than it sounds like on the surface. <laughs> it, and the magic answer is it depends. Yes, okay. uh, it depends on what data we are try, trying to obtain. Mm -hmm. With regard to student success in math courses, then that, that's going to become the grades, mm -hmm. the, the final grades for students in that math course. If, if we're looking at financial aid, then that would become a completely different source for data. But what, we, what we've done at the institution is we've tried to institutionalize a process for collecting the data. So we do have a single department that's responsible for going out and collecting the data and then helping us synthesize what that data means towards whatever we may be trying to achieve. So are they looking at grades or test scores, both? On, on a routine basis, um, grades, grades are reviewed. Um, at, the, at the conclusion of every semester, grade, uh, grade distributions are looked at grades overall are tracked so that we can kind of have an idea of, of how students are performing. Um, we have a number of different data sets that, that we do routinely look at. Of course, enrollment, FTE, uh, how, our, how, how the college is funded is another one of those, but student success is another, is another metric. Um, we're even uh, maturing even more within institutional effectiveness and data collection. Um, one thing that we will be doing starting next year is educating our board more purposefully on student success metrics and data. And the board is fully aware of this project and what it means for the institution, what it means for our students. But, it, but thus far, we have not provided detailed statistical data to the board on a routine basis. So that will change in the coming year. We're actually going to begin putting it in front of the board what our graduation rates are, what our success rates are, so that they are more aware. And what that, what that inherently builds is accountability, not, not necessarily for the board, but for me and for the institution itself. Because if, if my bosses are saying, you need to be working on this, well, it's going to get my full attention. But really, at the end of the day, it's, it's trying to set the institution up and set up processes that make us focus on student success because that that's why we're here and that's the reason we try to that's the reason we work hard every day and that's because the students who are coming in here they need the skills and the knowledge that we're trying to provide to them so that they can be successful and a productive citizen um, i mean you, you guys know i can go on all day about that but i mean that's what it's all about was the reason math was picked is because the majority of the students that attend Stanley Community College are from Stanley County, and the majority of the Stanley County students went to the go to the went to the Stanley County public school system, and math is a weakness in the Stanley County school system. Students were graduating. Leon, I hate to tell you no, <laughs> but this is one of those times that I'm going to have to say no. That that was not the reason. Um, actually, it didn't feed into, we didn't have any discussion about, well, our students are not coming to us as prepared as other students are not as prepared. The reason we picked it is just really because we're so proud of the fact of how successful we're being with math, because math is a difficult subject for students when they first arrive on campus. And that, that holds true not just for Stanley County residents, but that holds true across the country. It, it's not isolated just to Stanley County and the preparation they may or may not be getting uh, before they come here. It's a nationwide epidemic, if you will. So I was just really proud and the staff was really proud to see that positive trend in math. And it, it, it's just one of those things that makes you want to stand on, stand on at, at the rooftop and pound your chest because it's, it's something that we can really be proud of. I'll chime in there. I, I think I agree with you absolutely. This is a national issue and 
Uh, progression through gateway math in the first year is a national metric that uh, we work with many of our Achieving the Dream colleges on improving. Uh, and not all of them are able to improve at the rate that you've improved and to have you know, kind of that three-year success trend. So when you recertify in three years, we'll hope that that trend continues to, to improve. You'll also have a chance to, to look at other metrics as well. But this is a key metric across the country, not just for Stanley uh, Community College or Stanley County. When you talk about gateway math, ballpark, how many students would that affect like in a typical year? How many students are you talking about that would be involved or touched by this program? Ballpark. Mm. Old percentage, 50%, 40%, 100, 200, what? We, we actually want to see that percentage increase because we want, we want our students taking their gateway math courses as early in their academic career as possible because the tendency is students struggle in math so they put it off and then they wait until the last semester and then that just it perpetuates their career or their, the time that they are here on campus so we really are trying to get the students to take those courses earlier as soon as possible once they get here uh, the number of students on average we'll have about 2,500 students a uh, per per semester and I would say roughly 500 of those students are going to be enrolled in their first time college level course and that, that first time is key but also gate the college level math course is also key there are several key indicators there that would not make that number higher Since math is so tough, and does this program offer remediation? Let's say you've got a student, they go through a semester, and they don't do really well. Uh, or you're going to have summer classes. I know right now you're having winter break classes. Will there be like remediation times or periods that the students who did poorly or really should have done better in math can, can do remediation or help? If a student's not successful in their college level course, then then ultimately they'll they'd have to repeat that course. But that's really uh, you're speaking to what we think has made our our gateway math courses so successful, and that is we have built in some of those measures in, in an initiative we call Let's Go Racing, and that is uh, we within the course there's some pretesting of mathematical concepts. And if a student doesn't perform as well on those, then they have the opportunity within that gateway college level course to have a little remediation within the course itself so that they are more likely to be successful. So uh, that let's go racing it, it's if everybody's on college, if everybody's on track, that's great, but then there may be a little spur where the student needs a little additional help and they get that within the course itself. So, and that's our math faculty have just been so supportive of students and they're willing to meet with students outside of class we have tutoring available so really it becomes a matter of what does the student need to be successful and they have almost everything I'm not going to say they have everything because that's a pretty absolute statement but just about everything we can do to help them be successful they have available but some students progress at different rates and we do have some students that aren't successful, but those students are becoming fewer and fewer. Um, yeah, pretty easy one, Polly. Um, how long has Stanley Community been a part of the uh, Achieving the Dream network? We have been a part of the network, the ATD network, since 2012. Okay. ATD was conceived in 2004. The, the honor and congratulations, Dr. Um, and I hear you, there's that built-in accountability advantage that you get from it. There's the grant opportunities you get. What are some of the other benefits of the Achievement of Dream School? Rich, you honestly, one of, the, one of the most significant takeaways I get is the recognition from a national institution on saying, you're doing something and you're doing it well. What that that really speaks a lot to our faculty and staff. It's something that they can be proud of because 
the faculty and staff at Stanley Community College have really worked hard over the last few years to improve student success efforts. And that was evidenced by the, the multiple initiatives the college has been involved in, completion by design, the Pathways Project, uh, achieving the dream, uh, becoming a leader of college. The college is showing its commitment to student success. So that recognition and, and being able to say to all faculty and staff, you, faculty and staff, are the reason that our students are being successful and it's officially recognized. That to me is one of the most significant benefits. Of course, grant opportunities, that, that catches my eye as well. But uh, looking at it from a perhaps a little more of a selfish perspective, it does provide some national exposure to Stanley Community College and Stanley County because it is a relatively small network of leader colleges. So we're at the table with colleges who are having success as it relates to student efforts, but those, those colleges are from all over the country. And then that also opens up opportunities at, at other nationwide institutions. So that as discussions are made or perhaps other initiatives are developed, that's, that's one of my hopes, is that this helps Stanley Community College, it helps position us so that whenever another student success initiative across the country is developed, Stanley Community College hopefully can be a part of that initiative because I like being purposeful and I like having that accountability and if we're part of a nationwide initiative, then that drives some of that accountability and that's one thing that I do appreciate. So it, it really is, um, Honestly, there are no drawbacks to this. The students win, the county wins, the college wins. Hopefully, Dr. Stout would agree that ATD wins. Um, Absolutely. So I like to say, no bird soars in a calm. That's uh, from the Wright brothers, Wilbur Wright, observing birds uh, day after day. And this work is hard work. Uh, you know, it's not easy work. And the leader college designation from my perspective, internally, it, it's, it's about pride. It, it affirms that you're moving in the right direction. It's something that I think gives momentum to the work, uh, acknowledges the work, and it gives you, as Stanley at Community College, an opportunity to share with other leader colleges what you're doing that's best practice, and to learn as well uh, from other leader colleges about opportunities you might have to adopt best practices that they've that they've proven out to be successful. So that mentoring, that networking that happens with the leader colleges, I think is, is very special. And Richie, I'll say in, in the folder you have, I believe there's, there's an attachment that has more specific benefits that are, that's associated with being leader college status, so. Uh, do leader colleges usually see like a, a jump in enrollment at all, or is that just not really track maybe or anything. Or I'm not hoping for it. For that. Well, actually, that's not something that I expect to see. Um, you know, it would be nice. Uh, well, this is the extra exposure, maybe. <laughs> the, what, it, it, being a rural college yeah. uh, and being a commuter school, uh, it's unlikely we're going to see a significant um, difference in enrollment because we are a leader college. Um, hopefully, some students from neighboring counties may see this and recognize, hey, this is a really good school, we're gonna come, but we're not a residential institution, so people are driving in. Uh, they could be online, but for the most part, they're driving in, so it's really a limited geographic area. Ballpark again, how many math instructors do you have either full-time and or part-time, and how many math classes or how many semesters, and I know there's such things that average student or a typical student, but the majority of your students, how many math classes or semesters of math would a typical average most of the uh, student body take while they're at Stanford Community College? How, many, how much math would they take and how many math teachers do you have full-time and or part-time? All part is fine. On average, uh, Stanley Community College student is going to take two college level math courses during their career with us. Again, that's on average, but that's a good average. How many courses do we offer on any given semester? Uh, I'd have to look, Leon. Um, 
Yeah, 15, 20. Okay. Gateway, or I, I don't say gateway. Well, if we're talking gateway courses, probably 12 to 20. Okay. And how many instructors ballpark, full time and ballpark time? Two full time. Uh, we're going to see probably up to 10 part time faculty. When you say two college level courses, is that two semesters? Typically, yes. Okay, okay. And ideally, those would be one taken in the fall, one taken in the spring, yes. real compressed. Uh, that's okay. what we, uh, okay. students are required to have advising, so uh, that's what we advise them to do. Any other questions? Do you does being from a rural area and being a small college did that help you with this did that help you get this designation? I don't know. It, I would say ATD looks at the data and they look to see if the institution has achieved the statistical positive trend over three years. Whether we're an urban school or a rural school, I would say doesn't play into that. I would say that. Stanley has some advantages being where it is. We're being in a state uh, where uh, we don't have unions. That, that's something that some states have to deal with. They have faculty unions and staff unions that they must, mani they must maneuver. So as, they, as an institution, uh, California, I'll use as an example, uh, it's much more difficult for them to launch these initiatives because they then they also have collective bargaining. They have the unions they must work with. We're, we're, we don't have that, so we're able to be a little more nimble. We're, we are also a smaller institution. North Carolina having 58 community colleges. We're the third largest community college system in terms of colleges in the country. So what that means is that the overall student enrollment is smaller as compared to other states. So other states may have student populations of 20,000 or even more. Uh, we, were, we were, as part of the Pathways work, we were, there were schools over 40,000 students. There were multiple schools and they were, they were communicating because they are a like group. So they're talking about things that they are dealing with. Well, being a, what, nationwide we're a small institution what that provides us is a level of nimbleness that uh, states that have unions simply can't man can't maneuver as quickly but as a larger institution it's harder to turn a ship than it is a smaller boat and we're able to turn things around much more quickly because we have smaller numbers the smaller number of students smaller faculty and staff if we have a college like me we can bring all faculty and staff in and talk with them and we do that every month so as a larger institution, you simply can't do that. So personally, I think that comes with it, certain advantages. With this work, we have those advantages. It has disadvantages, but we don't focus on the disadvantages. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This is wonderful. <clears throat> Some really excellent questions. Yeah. I'd really like to thank Dr. Stout again. Thank you. It's a pleasure to participate, and you did a great job uh, talking of, about the work, and uh, we're just very proud to have you in the Leader College Network now. Thank you. Hope you have a great holiday and a good new thank year. You. All right. Thank you.